Welcome to Oaken Bros. This is Eric. I'm Michael, and if you want to learn the secrets of the universe, the law of attraction, mysticism, brohood, gambling, movies, pop culture, archangels, magic, good food, business, health, family, and mediumship, smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, press the noti icon, and spread this video around like peanut butter and jelly. I love it. So today we have on Hans Wilhelm. He's the author and illustrator over of over 200 books for all ages. His books have sold over 40 million copies and are translated into 30 languages. As a mystic, Hans has created over 100 short YouTube videos in which he visually explains the laws of the universe. You can visit uh, lifeexplained.com for more information. Thank you for coming on, Hans. Thank you for inviting me. It's fa fabulous to be with you. It's a great honor and uh, lovely to meet you in person. Likewise. Nice, nice to meet you too, man. I wanted to jump right in. We were binge watching your channel on YouTube, which it's under your name, Hans Wilhelm. Uh, and I was looking through the comments and on your video, spirit, soul, and human being, someone commented, you can tell this man has meditated on life and has, and has acquired knowledge we all ignore. My question to you is, when did you become a spiritualist and a mystic? Were you like brought up that way or was there a moment in your life that you said, I have to learn about these things? Uh, not in my household. Uh, my parents were not religious, but I was, when I was sort of 18, 19, I really questioned the religious, the organized religions, and I thought there must be more to life. And uh, that's how I suddenly discovered basically transcendental meditation was 19, which I no longer do, but it, it really helped me at that very moment. It really gave me a confidence and and uh, a security which i never really had as a young man teenager it was very difficult years for me and so when i was 19 i was so secure and felt so uh, affirmed in it that i just sort of left germany and went to africa and lived in africa wow. really something which i normally would have never done had i not gotten some preparation and there i continued my studies with edgar casey material and so on and so on and i stayed with it and it just helped me throughout my life and i was always very, very interested in this material. And over time, it became more and more focused to a very simple and straightforward path and less complicated. I mean, initially, when you start off, you're interested in this and that and one. It's, it's, it's like a, like a, like a, I said, like a candy store. You know, there are so many subjects and you cover so many subjects in your interviews. It's, it's fascinating, but you can get lost. Thank you. So over time, of course, uh, I just sort of boiled it down and I got uh, very wonderful teachers throughout my life. And uh, this is now what I share. I was not going to share it uh, because I think it's a very personal uh, kind of thing, the spiritual path. And uh, as, as you know, my, my videos, which I offer, make no money. There is no advertisements in it and I don't sell anything and you don't have to join anything. So it is totally freely available which I like to keep that way because my normal income is always the uh, it's my writing and illustrating which I've been doing for years that's but amazing that's amazing you said something I watched this amazing video of yours and it, it goes into what what I want to talk about with um, the law of attraction and you said you know the secret doesn't work it's not about um, the law of attraction it's not about you know the sports car, and I agree with you. It's not about the sports car, and it's not about the um, you know the hundred million dollars. It's about what your soul's purpose is. Can you explain that? Well, we are easily uh, when the when the spirit when the secret came out, everybody was suddenly talking about the law of attraction, which of course is an ancient law, which our, our whole way, uh, relative universe uh, runs on. But um, people then have used it in a way to gain some stuff, whether it may be a good position, may be a house or whatever it is. It's, uh, they have used this or they try to use this uh, law to gain something. And our goal here in life is not to gain something, but to become something. And it's mm. really, really different. So there, the, the secret has basically deviated a lot of people from the original path. And has taught them anything you want, anything you wish, you can have. And yes, you can actually get a lot of this stuff if you focus strongly on it. But yes. are you sure that this is actually what your soul wants? Does your soul agree with that? And for mo in many, many cases, the soul has other plans for us than our ego has, because it's our ego who always wants stuff. Our ego wants for the comfort and security for our physical body. And when we feel an inner lack of something, 
when we try to compensate it in the outer world, like, like a bike being prestige, power, money, wealth, or whatever it is. So it's not helping our soul. It's just trying to help our ego. And the more we get into our ego, the more trouble we, we create for ourselves and for everyone in around. How it's do incredible. you find out what your soul soul's purpose that's is? That's my next question, Eric. Yeah, I mean, that, that leads right <laughs> into it. How do you, like, that's, I mean, it's easy to say, but how do you, how does someone who feels completely lost find out what it is they're supposed to be doing? I think it's very simple. We make it obviously complicated. Our ego wants it to make it complicated, but I think it's very simple. Now, there are, we all have sort of some individual purposes, like for instance, maybe some of us come down here to take care of another person or to learn a specific lesson or whatever, or to teach or whatever it is. But the majority of human beings here on this planet is here to undo our soul burden called karma to undo all the stuff, the wrong stuff, all our unloving stuff, our thoughts, actions, words of the past in this and previous lifetimes, to undo them. They have been stored in the repository planets until the time is ready for us to face them. And in this lifetime, our day-to-day -day moment is built up of what I call building blocks or components. When those planets that have stored our karma radiated back to us in small little increments, and day to day, we are only asked to deal with what is before us. So when we speak about purpose, our ego immediately or very often likes to have a grand purpose. I want to change the world. I want to do this. I want to do that, etc. It's all ego stuff. Basically, we are here to deal from moment to moment, whatever we are facing, whatever is unloving any kind of interaction with other people which gives us some trouble, any kind of email which disturbs us, any kind of uh, irritation and disappointment, whatever it is, are all stuff which is coming back to us and for us to now change into love through forgiveness, to repentance, to affirm amends and to make this life right. So basically we're only here to undo our karma. Earth, planet Earth is nothing but a school. It's not our temporary, our permanent uh, uh, place to, to live forever because we all leave after sort of 25,000 days. It's, it's just, it's very, very short. Right. But um, we are here, we are, it's, it's a very special planet uh, to come here because souls from all over the, um, from the re relative reality can come and incarnate here, which is normally not the case because everything else runs by on the law of like attracts like. So in the spiritual realm where our souls are between incarnations is that we are usually uh, surrounded by like-minded souls. They can be all murderers, they can be all communists, whatever whatever your, our major beliefs are. And there is mm -hmm. very little growth possible. Besides, we also have a, no physical body which buffers out the blows of fate. So when we come here to planet Earth, we have this incredible opportunity for being uh, exposed to many different beliefs, different ideas, and so on. And we can truly grow. And we can now face our karma in a most wonderful, wonderful is maybe the wrong word, in the most amazing way, in, a, in a very graciously given to us, already in small increments every day. Now, sometimes we have a blow of fate, but if we go back, there have always been warnings. When we suddenly start coughing after we smoked for 10 years, that is a warning, maybe stop or something like this. And all blows of face have warning. If you take all the kind of uh, climate changes, they are not really happening out of the blue. There mm. were always signs and symbols for people to, to make changes, whatever they were. And so everything else has got already warnings. So when we totally are living in the here and now, this is what Edgar Trollek here teaches so wonderfully, then, then we are do, fulfilling our purpose. Mm -hmm. What what do you say about people who get sick? And they're generally good people. That they don't really have any bad karma. Could that be a previous life thing? Our grandmother was um she was a smoker. She smoked her whole life and she passed away from lung cancer. The nicest woman didn't have a mean bone in her body. So I look at it like she smoked, she got sick, she she suffered towards the end. It was about a year of suffering. Um and, you know, you don't want to wish that on anyone. But what do you say to that when, you know, that the sickness comes back to people on karma? Was it because of her smoking or was it because she was mean to someone when she was a teenager? How does that, can you explain that? 
first of all, I would never speculate what, what the karma or the reason of illness of other people are. But generally, okay. generally speaking, when a person who smokes and at the end has got lung cancer and so on, this again, because they have abused their body, our body is a gift right. to God. So they have definitely done something and probably your grandmother knew it wasn't a good idea to do it. Either. Right. So right. she acted against her own better will knowledge. Now, the illness is not, it's not punishment. It's only a consequent. And it's also um, it's something, there are, is no, there, all karma, there are, is no punishment in the universe. And it is wow. also the consequences. It's the law of cause and effect. Wow. And the reason why uh, a person like your grandmother does have this uh, rather painful ending in her life is also a helping tool for her when she moves over into the other realm. Of she the said that. She said that. She said, we, we go to mediums all the time and we communicate with our loved ones that have passed away. And she said, I had to go through that last year to get to the level where I'm at now over here. So what you just said is 100% fact. Yeah. yeah. Do you do you uh do you have any type of intuition like that Hans as far as like speaking to the other side or do you visit mediums? Well, I uh, I'm not saying uh, I I don't develop it. It's not at the moment. It will come if I need it to, but no, I do not. I do not communicate with the other side. Neither do I uh, suggest to do it necessarily because I, I respect very much the free will of the people, of the souls that have passed. And they have their work to do. There's a lot of work on the other side. They're yes. not sitting there and strumming harps on clouds. Their right, path absolutely. path continues. And if we continuously go to medium, for instance, well, I'm not saying this is wrong, but if you do that, you're pulling them out from, from wherever they are. Uh, you're interrupting their thing. It's like your parents continuously checking up on you. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? It's wow. your, your, your parents get on your nerve if they do that all the time. Right. So let them walk and let them walk and find out why you feel so sad that they have left. What is it in you that needs to be filled? And what is this love which left? And whom can you now give this love to someone else? Mm -hmm. with, uh, because there are other people in your life. So there is a message for us, which is grieving and mourning. Mm -hmm. And um, so I do not propose the, the idea to go to medium things. I, if they come to me, like recently I was interviewed on uh, Anna Raimondi's show uh, months ago, and suddenly my father, because she is a medium, Mm -hmm. Right. My father in the interview came and, and, and spoke to me. Uh, that happens that that uh, that they come to me like I once was. Actually, my father was also when I some what is it twelve years ago when I was at a book signing event of a medium when I liked the uh, I like to meet that person. But suddenly, totally unexpected, my father came very publicly and uh, I had told him how what to expect before he died. And he didn't believe in life after death. He was absolutely convinced that once you are dead, it's all over. And then he came through this medium there publicly and said, uh, yes, thank you very much. Everything you said is right. Go and write some books. Other people Sorry. won't know that because I see people's souls arriving here totally confused, don't know what happened, don't even right. know they're dead. Right. Prepare them. And anyway, so I, I, instead of writing, I, I chose a YouTube ch channels. So wait, 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 wait. So explain to us what's it like to die. <laughs> You've done it many, many times, Eric. Sure, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> that's when you said that's the veil, the veil of forgetfulness. Yeah. Like that's what Eric and I are trying to remember. That's this journey with this podcast. That's this journey with the show and the books that we're reading and the books that we're writing. And our mother became a medium. Yeah. What's that veil of forgetfulness? Well, hold on. What, before, yeah, before, what's that before, like? Before we before we go there, what did you tell your father? that that was that he said was 100 percent true um i don't know offhand but of course he didn't believe in life after this so i told him that uh, just in case uh, uh, you are alive and just assume it i'm not telling you will but just in case you are these things first of all you will be surprised that you're still alive which is true a lot of souls wow i'm still alive right. secondly you are most uh, most likely welcomed by souls like previous, uh, his past life wives and so on people who love you and try to lead you on Plus the fact, if you're on the other side, there's also, uh, you will probably also find that what you left behind is of very little importance. Anything what you did here accomplished here. You will also find out what, what generally people find out, it's not only him, but anyways, we also are not necessarily wiser by being dead. We are just as stupid as we, if we were stupid here, yeah, we are stupid on the other side too. Yep. 
we also have our cravings and our desires very much so on the other side so anything what we crave here any kind of vice or whatever it is will be on the other side as well and any kind of strong belief we have we will have on the other side as well if we are strong believing in some kind of religious teachings and that is really we really that is the vibration we will be attracted mm. to in the spiritual realm so we will not automatically be clever and wiser but uh, these are probably one of the most important and then of course there comes the life review which we have we all will go through that we look back on our life not as a judgment or someone else is judging us we are judging ourselves we look at our life and says look i wanted to achieve this in this life this is i wanted to get rid of have i achieved it or not and have i hurt other people in this process this life review is a very important thing it's really for us to help it's like like uh, finishing class at school and looking back and says, what have I really learned here and what have done? And maybe I must go back or maybe not. So these are just a few of these things. And uh, he was totally surprised that uh, what I suggested was, was exactly that is. And he seemed to be working at the receiving section of, of souls that come, uh, that have just died. And he says, there is so much confusion. People are not even aware that they are dead and uh, so to, to it's, it's a major effort for them to convince them and to ask them to follow them for their next level of education and do, their level of growth do you think that the more enlightened you are here the less likely you are to come back here once you've passed on it is let's put it i speak of i rather the word enlightened is a little bit uh i'm careful because a lot sure. of people think that enlightenment and that because they follow a certain path and so on I says, what is your love vibration? That is for me. I say, are you really deeply a loving and caring person? And that is for me. This is my definition of enlightenment. Are you really the closest thing which, with God? God is love to me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, is your life really a, a loving ex example? And have you loved that? And people and, who have done that on the other side may not have to reincarnate. But, and this is the important thing, if you are truly a loving soul, you may want to come back and help others. Hmm. And so a lot of people have, have said, oh, I don't want to come back. This is a horrible life. What can I do not to come back? It says, once you are to the level that you no longer need to come back, you may think about this as well differently. You may say, maybe I do come back and help others because you do this out of love. Love is nothing else than service, service to others. And when you do this uh, out of your heart, of your heart desire, then you will have no problems coming back and, and help other people who are still struggling here in this, uh, uh, in this world. Are you familiar with archangels? Not guardian angels, but archangels. Uh, I do not. I uh, know my, my, my information on that is too limited. I do not do that. I do always what my my source or my focus is always divinity direct god god the god energy or christ energy which is the same it's okay because i do not do with it i do not deal so much with the uh the hierarchy below because the reason i will tell you very or very honestly michael uh, there is a great danger here the danger is that we don't know who these entities are who represent to us themselves as archangels or whatever or divine is are they truly from the highest vibration for the mm -hmm. negative side and we do have negative entities who continuously want to influence us suck our energy and also use us in the afterlife the, we all know the faustian bargain these souls have no problems to imposter themselves as an angel or whatever you like and says here i am tell me what you want i give it to you mm -hmm. and we are binding ourselves to that spirit being and they give to us what we want but it's a Faustian bargain, and the other side, eventually, we have to pay it all back. So for this reason, I personally stay away from or anything, anybody less than, than uh, God or Christ. And of course, I do, not that I communicate with my guardian spirit, but I'm totally aware of that guardian spirit always mm -hmm. by my side. So therefore, I stay away from all the other hierarchies and all the other famous uh, uh, leaders on the other side, the White Brotherhood or whatever you name. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I go directly to source. I've uh, seen too many other troubles over the years that people get locked into kind of binding situations with these things. Mm -hmm. I rather prefer to go direct to source. Why, why bother with, 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 a, with a lower representative when, you can, when God asked us directly, come to me? To me, he said, he didn't say come to my guardian, to my archangel or anybody else. He said, come to me. I am your loving father. 
I want you back home in the absolute reality from where you were and where you come back. And mm-hmm. that's why I said, well, if you want me back, then I want to come to you. And not right. <laughs> so what is your method of, of contact? Prayer. I think that's prayer. And, and also throughout the day. Uh, one thing which I have done for years is the most thing, when, uh, particularly now, even when I see so much uh, pain and horror with, with the uh, epidemic, out here and so on, to be continuously grateful for whatever I have, and even the breath I take, the chair I sit on, the things I'm having a conversation with you, be grateful, grateful, grateful. This grateful energy is probably one of the most powerful energy we can create instantly in ourselves. When we, as I said, count our blessings every time throughout the day, the moment we do this, and I have made a video on gratefulness, which is very uh, speaks about it, how quickly it becomes an armor that protects us when we are grateful. And uh, even further, thankful, which means thankfulness is to somebody higher than ourselves. Mm-hmm. And the energy is really uh, which keeps me always uh, in tune and keeps me uh, out of negative and deep uh, negative kind of thinking and moods and so on, the constant gratefulness. And there's so much to be grateful for every moment. I mean, you take a pen into your hand, think about the hundreds of people who work on this pen and be grateful for them, what they have done and given us and so on. Everything which I surround myself, the microphone, the computer, is is created by other human beings. And uh, without them, I would have virtually nothing. Right. so grateful to everyone and to divinity that I am where I am, even if my problems I have, be to be grateful for them, I think, is the key element. Because the problems are here for me to, uh, for self-recognition, so that I recognize who I am, what do I have to clear up still. So it's a great opportunity for growth. Amazing. Do you remember, uh, do you... Do you, um, past lives, clearly you believe that we, we come back and, and there's a, a rotation. Did you ever do a past life regression? Yes, I did. I did in the past before I really sort of, at the, when I didn't, when I changed my mind on it. Yeah. I, uh-huh. I did them and I, I, I must say they were quite revealing. And, and, and what was, what, what did you, what did you learn? Who were you in previous lives? If you uh, want to share, if you don't want to share, you know, oh, you don't yeah, have... it's, it's, it's so long ago, but there were, there were, uh, Gosh, yeah, there was an, I was an African person in, in Africa. And wow. uh, yeah, it was very, very interesting. I mean, wow. the boy appeared, but basically I was very young, very much in love with this wonderful young girl and so on. And I was out hunting and I came back. And um, there, um, suddenly I came back. Everybody was gathering together and was looking down to the ground. And there I came and I saw that uh, my wife was killed, was dead. And I saw wow. it and I was so Shock! I made a vow never to fall in love again, never to marry again. Hmm. And um, that was an eye-opener for me because I was never really keen on getting married again. So it took me a very while before I finally <laughs> found Mrs. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> but I made this vow subconsciously, and these vows are definitely powerful, which we do in previous lifetimes. They carry us through, throughout, through, uh, through many, many lifetimes. Right. So I'm sure, that was part of the reason why I says I will take all the pleasures, but I don't want the final commitments. So uh, that was just and was one of these ideas, how our vows from the past can really uh, overshadow our lives today. That's incredible. And pretty much the only way to kind of figure that out is to do past life regressions, right? So you can kind of uncover your, your, your who you are. Uh, I don't think that is the only way. I think you will be guided to whatever it is, uh, whatever right. you, you face. And, and if you trust and, and have come into dialogue, and that is my definition of a mystic, is to be in constant dialogue with divinity, with God, you will be given the answers uh, in, in one way or the other. You will find that out and you will run. And I think I would have met my wife anyway, and I would have married her anyway. Right. My my strong focus to avoid marriage for so many years was was quite amusing. <laughs> Looking back, and eventually I was sort of yeah. <laughs> but I, oh, I think I would have married her anyway. <laughs> Do, are you? Oh, hold on a sec. Are yeah. you? Uh, are you more religious or are you more spiritual? No, I don't believe in religion. I made a video on religion, and uh, I'm very skeptical because the moment somebody got hold of these wonderful uh, spiritual texts, whether they are the Bible or whatever it is, uh, an organization forms around it, and 
it easily gets into the negative uh, forces and distorts it. And uh, then comes in the control, control, control. Yes. God is freedom. God does not want us to join any circles, any groups, or anything like this. He wants us to himself. This is the only connection. But the moment we line up to any kind of uh, uh, yeah, religious organization or whatever it is, we are binding ourselves and we are limiting ourselves. And therefore, I'm not in favor of religion. They have distorted so much, not even to mention all the wars on the past. They're mostly religious wars. Even today, we have them on our planet where one fights the other. Uh, no, I'm not very fond of, uh, of religion, I must say. So uh, I do spirituality because it's much broader. It's much more directly. Uh, and you don't have to be anything or to call yourself anything. You just have to contact with it and use the connection with God. God is ingenious simplicity. It's not difficult to us. You don't have to study big texts. You don't have to go to big classes, whatever it is. God is accessible to anyone. I mean, uh, Jesus was a carpenter and he sat in the temple and he taught the scribes. You, we all have an equal amount of wisdom in ourselves. Everyone has an equal, because we all come from divinity. We all were perfect being ones. So we all know the same stuff. It just needs to be uncovered. And if, if for some people, uh, being part of an organization or a group and so on works, that's fine. But we can get lured into rituals. We can lure it into dogmas. We can lure it in uh, hierarchies and memberships. And they may be very tempting to our ego because we, I can dress differently. I can tell you what kind of exercises I do, I, whatever it is. And it's a lot of ego pleasing there. God doesn't go for that. We go for the real, simple, straightforward. This is what who I am. I don't need any of these trimmings. And eventually we all have to let go of those because these kinds of bindings, these religious bindings, can be so detrimental on the other side. They bind us there as well, and they can us stuck. We do have whole areas of, of souls clutter together. These are the Anglican, the Muslim, the Jews, or whatever it is. And they are very, very strong believers, and they don't, they cannot grow. They cannot grow. They have to incarnate over and over again to slowly open themselves up that maybe my very limited and narrow view of God and divinity may not be the answer. And then they slowly open up. So I would rather go for direct connection to God without any kind of dogmas, rituals, or whatever it is. The prayer is the only thing we need. Hans, define God. Is it a man in the sky? Is it a light? Is it a being? Is it, is is it, the, it, sum, is it the sum of all love? Right. What is your definition and visually? Maybe all of it. I go, I go very much by, by uh, what Christ mentioned earlier, the Christ, um, the, the prodigal son story, when we sort of, when he spoke about the father who let his son go, give him the free will into the world and lose himself. And then the son finally decides to return back to the father. He says, I'd rather be a servant in my father's estate than, than staying here in, in, in this world. And then, of course, he returns to father, opens him with, with open arms and um, welcomes in and great feast and, and, and new clothes or whatever. And that image which Christ gave to us is for us to understand in our three-dimensional reality. It is very simple, very straightforward. God is seven-dimensional. It is impossible for us to really comprehend anything close to it. Right. And the closest thing Christ said is use him as a father figure, a real loving father figure, not this condemning one <clears throat> of the Old Testament, but the real love, a love presentation of love. And um, uh, I also believe it is a form of personification, I would say, uh, who is also the creator. But it is a seven-dimensional entity, and I try not to put any image, because I can't put images on right. it. But for me, the simple images which Christ has given us through the Father is the one I can connect with. <clears throat> this gives me the inroad to a dimension which is at the moment beyond my comprehension. What are the seven? What does seven-dimensional mean? <clears throat> Well, the law of God consists of seven energies. The first one is order, the divine order, divine will, divine wisdom, earnestness, patience, love, and mercy. These are the, uh, the, the, the vibrations, you can call them. Are those the, the seven fruits? The seven fruits. I'm not familiar with Michael, what was it? Was it the 11 fruits or the seven fruits? Or am I confusing? No, them? it was the seven, uh, the seven fruits of the Holy Spirit. So maybe it's, the same, it's, it's all in the same vein. 
them. Yeah, they're all the same base. They find also different words. And I think this is in the same energies are with the seven chakras. And of course, people give them a different words, different names. But that's why the seven main chakras in our body, it's the same kind of system there. So these are the energies. And we slowly have to um, get from the lowest energy up to the highest again, to love. So we are still on the lowest one, which is order. And in my, in my videos, I show that the material universe is in the lowest sphere of order. And the first thing we all have to learn is to put order into our life. Uh, a house can only be built if the foundation is orderly. So we have to do order, which means really to, in our thinking, in our way of being and so on, to put order into our household, into what we do, our work, etc. And then the next one is to learn what is actually divine will versus ego will. And that is another step. The next one, what is the divine will? What is the will for the well of being of all beings? And then comes wisdom, and then comes earnestness, which is also the Christ energy, and then comes uh, 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 patience, uh, love, and uh, mercy. So this is a slow progress. These are the seven energies, as we I can understand them from our three-dimensional understanding. We are, at this, as I said, only three-dimensional, we can think. But everything else is higher. That's, I'm just making a video on, on, on dreams, which is very interesting, because when we go to these higher spheres, we get seven uh, dimensional images and so on, and we have to funnel it down to three dimensional. Our consciousness does it, our soul does it. Right. It just doesn't work. That's why they look very confused uh, images, because it doesn't always work, because it's seven dimensional reality is not understandable to us. And uh, so, anyway, that is just a thought line. What books got you? What, what books were eye opening that were those aha moments where you go, This is the information that I wanted to, that, that I, that I, that is changing my life. Well, I, for the last 30 years, I'm mostly le leaning on, on teachings, which has been given by uh, the, uh, a woman in Germany, uh, Gabriele, and all these books are on my website, lifeexplained.com. I don't sell them directly. I only take them as references. So that she has written, uh, she has uh, a lot of all revel revelations from God. God and Christ taught directly. There are the secret teachings of Christ in there. It's this wonderful teaching and so on, the teaching which, <clears throat> and other uh, books in there. So anybody who's interested can see those books on my website, lifeexplained.com. There's quite a lot of them. And go to the recommendation site, and there you find all these books. And I've studied them for 35 years. And they put everything together, what I've studied with Casey, with Steiner, with the Cause and Miracles, and whatever it is over the years. Suddenly it come together, and what, how it came together in the most wonderful ways, it simplified it. Right. It's all the, this, 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 this is quite difficult to understand stuff. And now I do this in videos. For instance, when I tell you that how for instance, a soul burden works. So when I do something wrong, it goes into my body, into my soul, into the soul of the person I hurt, into the Akashic record, into the planet. This is very abstract, <clears throat> and we have to really think about it, and even if you read it. But if I show it in my drawings, my illustrations, and for show mm -hmm. here, for instance, if I do something harmful, then this harmful thing is stored here in my, in my body, right. then in, the, in the soul, whoops, in the soul here, and then in the person I'm harming, then in the Akashic records which surrounds our planet and records everything what happens on this planet, and finally in the repository planets which are all, all our karma is stored, where eventually it comes back to us. When you see it in an illustration, it becomes also absolutely surprisingly uh, easy to understand. That's what I love. That's what I love about your about your videos, uh, your seven, YouTube videos. Yeah, they're seven eight minute videos. They're and, so uh, clear. Yeah. And they're so vivid. Um, I know you you found this through spirit science, and we're, Eric and I are huge spirit science fans. We love Jordan River and his entire Spirit Studios team. Um, but the way that you're visualizing it, and sometimes Jordan, you know, Jordan's things are like different level, right? When he talks about the Kabbalah and he talks about Christ consciousness, and and you're trying to like keep up with it. it it's it's different levels of learning. To me, I always say law of attraction is elementary school. Right, you know, you think things, you, you work towards it, you program your subconscious mind, and you get it. And then there's other levels. There's Christ consciousness. Did you read that book? I'm assuming you read Christ consciousness. No, I didn't. Okay, uh, it, it's about it's about all the stuff that you talk about that people have this revelation of Christ consciousness, and it changes everything. But that, it confuses me. Like whenever I hear the word Christ, I automatically think of Christianity and religion, but that's right. not the case, right? Definitely not. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they, they have totally distorted the, the whole <clears throat> Bible has been distorted by the Catholic Church. There's a, an interesting video I made. It's called Reincarnation uh, Part Two in which I explain how the church has distorted all the teachings and added all stuff like eternal hell and so on. And it wasn't the church so much. It was an emperor, Justinian, at the time, who actually saw himself as a leader of the church, and he took out reincarnation. Reincarnation was taught in the, by Christ as well as taught by the early Christian. And then suddenly an emperor took it out. So that's all the, all the distortion. And the distortion continues today. When they now in the new Bible translation, they take the Ten Commandments. One of them is, thou shall not kill. In the new version, it has, thou shall not murder. It's a very different meaning. When you say, oh, you shall not murder, then I, as an, uh, a leader of a country, can take you out into the army and you can kill other people because that's not murder in uh, common understanding. So wow. we can use. So there is a lot of implication here. We're continuously changing. And therefore, uh, no, I do not believe uh, Christ and Christianity is the same thing. The Christian wow. teachings are very, very different, and they have been totally distorted by the organization who wanted to, to hold people to them, because that is the whole idea. I mean, baptism, for an idea, that is such an invasion of, of the free will to do a child, to baptize a child before it can make up its own mind. It's a totally against the law of freedom. And uh, therefore, I do not believe that Christianity equals the teachings of Christ. I, I think that religion has been hijacked by these fundamentalists, and and it's been it, it's been detrimental to all of us. That we're we're in like this mind control where you know we're in the matrix, right? Like we all talk about you know being in the matrix. It's it's taking this red pill that you're giving people. You're giving people on YouTube this red pill to say, bro. This is not what it's about. It's about this. It's about love. Speaking of love, and this is an example, and it's not my example, but if you have a mother-in-law who's really mean, not my mother-in-law, but if you have a mother-in-law who's really hurtful and, you know, again, not mine. I like my mother-in-law, but like, is that your karma <laughs> or is it like, you know, like, why is this mother-in-law in my life, right? Because that's like the connotation, like. The mother-in-law, you yeah. know, and again, I'm not saying this. I, if my mother-in-law is watching, God yeah. bless you. But you know, the big character, the mother-in-law is always, uh, yeah, or the stepmother. One of the two is always uh, right. The wicked stepmother, right? Reputation. Yes, I know. <clears throat> yes, there's no coincidence. There are no coincidences in life. Everything is definitely carefully orchestrated by ourselves prior our incarnation. Ah. Before we incarnate, we yeah. see very clearly what will, what are the big challenges in this lifetime which we are having. We see, and I, in my video, Life Before Birth, shows it that we are basically right. it's like a riverbed, and we see all these these uh, difficulties which we will have to encounter. And these are basically our tasks that we have to uh, uh, have to do in this school time here on planet Earth, and including the difficult mother-in-law, which is nothing and nobody else than a loving uh, angel or a spirit being who incarnates in our into our lifetime and comes into our life to teach us a lesson. So she comes basically as an angel. It's an incarnated angel, and she only teaches us a lesson because she is. Uh, reflecting back to us what is in us. Wow. We can only attract that to us what is in us. You said, mentioned the most important one is the law of attraction. This includes of all the negativity and the negative characters which whom we attract into our life. They are basically reflecting back to us characteristics in ourselves <clears throat> which we either express in one way or the other or suppress. Maybe we also want to scream and shout and fight, right. but we're holding back. And a typical example is, uh, which I have in my video, is, is uh, spouse beating. When somebody is married to a person who really is, is, is hitting uh, her all the time, mm -hmm. um, he is expressing what uh, the victim, so-called victim is um, impressing or suppressing. Because she is saying, I'm not good, I'm not good, I'm not worth, I'm, I'm not good, no good. And then <clears throat> this message, I'm no good, is so strong that finally somebody comes and expresses the same vibration, you are no good, and hits physically to wake this person up and says, and to really understand that we are all love. So everything runs on the law of attraction, and the people whom we attract in our life who are difficult are nothing else but our saviors. And they wow. come to wake ourselves up. And uh, naturally, our ego says, she are wrong, they are wrong. And this is where this whole idea of victimhood <clears throat> and victimizer comes from. <clears throat> but in truth, there are no real victims because. 
whatever lessons I have to learn is can be very much so that in the previous lifetime it has been the other way around. I've been the, giving hell to that soul. It's quite possible, but not necessarily. It can be just sometimes the soul comes into my life so that I learn to be loving, forgiving, understanding, caring. And the moment I change myself, the other person usually changes their behavior or disappears from my life. There's a wonderful book, uh, The Radical Forgiveness by, uh, I forgot this last name, The Radical Forgiveness, a fabulous book, explains in great detail how the dynamic works when we are really ready to totally forgive and let go. And then the person changes on the other side. It's an energy decision. It's always, everything is energy. Not, mm -hmm. Everything in life is nothing but energy and, and vibration. This is what Einstein and that's just what we are. You and I are nothing energy. Our the, the matter around us is nothing energy and vibration. So if one energy is like this, it's like a trick, it's like they're coming together. And if one of them changes, then there is no longer the same need to be attracted to each other. It's all very wow. simple in a way. Michael and I always Mind have, blowing. Yeah, Mike and I always have this discussion where uh, you know, Michael thinks that um our lives are a screenplay and it's everything has been mapped out. I think that I think that it's clear what our paths are going to be, but there is such thing as free will. Um, which I mean, which one is it? Is every single day mapped out? Is it that you know after this I'm going to go eat lunch? Is that mapped out, or is that part of my free will, or are just the huge milestones the ones that we're looking at, or the people that we're going to be involved with? Is that mapped out or is there happenstance? I mean, you could meet somebody on the train, right? Or somebody on an airplane and, you know, they could be from a different country and you get connected somehow via something. I mean, is, is that by chance or is it mapped out? I come back to the, my suggestion of the riverbed. Life is like a riverbed and there are some fast, some difficult periods. So there are tidal waves and so on. And there are also easy flow flowing. So these things are set up and we agree to that life you will meet that person you will meet that grandmother etc you will meet this and you will meet that challenge and you will have to, uh, an illness and you will have uh, things like this and we agree to everything because everybody is here on their own free will we all have said yes to our life so these uh, these uh, uh, very um, important moments are outlined for us this is things but how we react to them or respond to them is from moment to moment our free choice we have free will every time we can see this as an opportunity for growth or we can curse it whatever it is we have that free will so we fade only to the point that the situation may we are facing is something which is predetermined by ourselves but how we respond to their situation or react to the response that is our moment to moment decision that's why i said at the beginning uh, all we have to do basically be in the here and now and see what is hitting me right now and do this in the most loving way and deal with it in the most loving way and clear that up. So, yes, it's both. There is fate in a way of the situation as it comes to me. But how I deal it, that is up to me from moment to moment, my free will. Sometimes money is like the biggest motivator. Is Does money equal ego? If it's ex every, everything in excess, you see, everything which too much can kill, too much water can drown you. If, without water, you can't, uh, you can't live. So everything which is in excess is a poison to us. And if uh, money is our big uh, uh, motivator to get money, get power, and I made a video on this one, how young people so easily are misguided in the illusion to have power, wealth, and fame. Uh, and how the negative forces use us. Yes, it does come from our ego. It does come from a perceived lack in ourselves. We are not enough. It comes this idea, I'm not enough. So therefore, if I have a lot of money, people will respect me and will love me. And if I have a lot of fame, a lot of uh, etc., people will love me. So it all comes back to a low self-esteem, to something in me <clears throat> which tells me I'm not enough, I'm not enough. And the idea and the funny thing is, when I have maybe 10 million or 10 billion, I still have got the same program. I'm not enough. That's why you've got the very rich people want even more money, more money. You say, why do they want more money? They have all that can, they can buy the whole world. And they want more and more because that hole in themselves, I am not enough, is always there. And that needs to be dealt with. So the ego is the one who tells us, well, if you've got money, if you've got wealth and you've got fame, everybody will love it. You will be fine. No, it won't. You, but the idea like, like, is it possible to have the money and the fame and still be a good person? Oh, definitely. If it's not our your prime goal, if it happens, right? 
invent something, you do something, you sell a great book and whatever. It right. was the prime goal as a side effect because then it doesn't come out of a lack. It comes to you because now you have the, given the opportunity to deal with wealth, to deal with fame. And it's a very, very, very challenging, challenging task to do. Mm -hmm. So many people are people are sudden wealth and so well if you do people win lotteries and win no time back where they used to be and and and, and beauty and fame so many people get to so, uh, get lose themselves in these things it's a very very risky kind of territory to be in but if it comes naturally to us uh, because uh, the work we do or the environment we are or we happen to win a lottery whatever then this is meant to be for ourselves and it doesn't come out of a lack purposes, but only as a growth opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you've written books on, you've written children's books. Have you ever written a tome on everything that you've learned spirituality wise? Well, in some way, they're all in my books, but it's just not so blatantly. And so obviously it's all nice <laughs> things. Right. And, 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 and children have it. Their children know it. Young people know that. Yes. They, they are so bright. I mean, I just said, um, we have a grandson. He is now nearly two years old. And that child still remembers, basically, although he doesn't speak about it, doesn't say it. But for them, it's clear that this is not the only life, but it's great to be here and fun, be open, enjoy the life, and so on. The enthusiasm and so on, it's just amazing. And we all had it. And uh, over time, when our ego set in, when suddenly we get worried, and we compare ourselves with others, and then we realize, oh my God, I'm not as rich, as famous, as beautiful, about everybody else. That's death. That's that's death in in the mind. I mean, Eric and I, Eric and I always liken it to what Joel Osteen said. And I want to get all religious and everything, but we love Joel Osteen. Yeah. He said, "Run your race, man. Don't worry about the next guy. Don't worry about." you know, who has more toys than you run your race. And that's what Eric and I do. That's how we live our lives with our families is that we run our race and the stuff that we're getting and the stuff that we're manifesting in our life. It's all, you know, we're trying to teach this to everyone. We're trying to teach it to the world that, you know, you got to be good and you got to have goals. And it's not, I wrote this in my book, just ask the universe. And I meant it because in my book, just ask the universe is like the universe is willing to give you everything you want and you can get everything you want. But who are you going to become as a person along the way is what counts. Definitely. The becoming. It's all about becoming. You know? Yes. Earth is a school. There's a lovely poem I like to say. That, uh, please. Please. It's one day, many, many years ago, I was stuck uh, on, on my speaking tour in, on, on O'Hara Airport in, uh, and for snow and so on. And, and I, I went to have a cup of uh, Starbucks coffee, which I normally don't drink because it's too bitter for me. And they had, at that time, the poems on their cups. And the poem I, I found there... <clears throat> Just blew me away. It was uh, life is a school for angels, love is a teacher, so you do your homework without fear. Death is merely graduation. Hmm. In that short uh, poem, everything is included. It's a simple way. It is so simple. We are and that was on a Starbucks cup. That was on a Starbucks cup. How do you so like that? Truth. If you ask me where do I learn from, I learn from <laughs> from Starbucks. Right? Where did you learn all of your your spirituality? Yeah, from Starbucks. You have you have an amazing message, Hans, um, <laughs> and you have quite a following on YouTube. And I always ask my guests, especially the ones who are creators, um, you, you should really consider trying out TikTok. Oh, it's interesting. Yeah, it's, I'm not good in technical stuff. And you so don't need to be. You don't need you don't, to be. Just dude. Take, it's take take your phone and record. That's it. That, that's all you need to do. Your message will go far and it will go wide. And uh, the reach on TikTok um, is much easier and you will get engagement sure. and um, and you can spread your message of love uh, all the much faster and easier on that platform. I would take so, Thank you so much, Eric. Eric I appreciate that. Thank you. I highly, Hans, highly recommend when I, it. When I get to your age, I want to look like you. I want to have your attitude. You you are so calming and so peaceful and so cool. Um, I don't know how old you are. I would I would love to know, but if you don't want to mention it on air, you don't have to. But whatever you seventy five, uh, like that's you know that's what I want to look like, right? <laughs> like like that's yeah. you, you are so Thank peaceful you. and calm, and and your message is so clear. Um, you, you're doing great your great deeds, man. Great what, service. What's your next year? two years look like what do you what's your plan uh, i'm trying to concentrate on the moment to moment if we come i, I do more videos uh, and and i enjoy you see the videos i also do for myself it's mm -hmm. not sure 
help others. I have to help by drawing it out. I understand it much better myself. Every time right. I do a video, wow, I learned so much from it. So I'm sharing what I learned. I'm a student myself in the spirit of us. I'm not a teacher. I just merely illustrate what I know. And uh, and I, I live very much by what Einstein says. If you can't explain it to a six-year-old, you probably haven't understood it yourself. <laughs> wow. The videos have to be really in a way that I understand, make sure, do I understand it? If it's clear. And when I understand it, I think then I can convey it to others. And uh, a lot of parents actually write to me, although you probably may have found it in the comments that they share them with the kids as well. Kids understand it automatically. They get it right away. And uh, so I will continue studying. I will continue learning. If it grows in this way, that way, TikTok or whatever, it will happen. Um, I am not here to missionarize or convince anybody. I'm merely offering the sets. If anybody doesn't like the stuff or doesn't and agrees with it, that's absolutely fine. Everybody has a different uh, way of vibration of awakening at, any, at a different time, a different, uh, and, and, there, and therefore... It's, uh, it's, I just merely offer it and have no need. And I said earlier, there is nothing to join. There are no advertisements. There is no requests for donations. Right. It's all uh, something which I share. And as I learn myself, I pass it on to others. Well, you're really practicing what you preach. I you try. know, you, yeah, you're really practicing what you preach and you're doing an incredible job. And what, what do you, what do you think about the hate? You got to have like a thought like, that piece of shit. Like, like, did, did you have? Do you have like, like when haters hater. get onto you? Yeah. Do you like? You're like, screw you, dude. You know, like, or you're like, I love you. I don't care. Uh, I love you. I when people do something to me, they about. Yeah, I hate like a YouTube comment or like if YouTube's gonna make like a snide comment and go, you're stupid and this is dumb and you don't know what you're talking about and it's birth to death. Well, like I saw like you, you had this amazing video and you had like three thousand upvotes and you have fifty seven thumbs downs. I'm like, who? Right. Like well, why would you, why would that why would this video about love and peace and and whatever it is that you're talking about have 57 downvotes. What do you think about those 57 people? Do you want to see them perish in hell? No, <laughs> I, I remember my own life. I don't know, Mark. And I have, um, when I studied, when I started to study uh, the spiritual path, there have been instances, and one of them was actually Rudolf Steiner. Uh, no, sorry, not Rudolf, uh, no, Edgar Casey. When the first time right. I heard about it, I was shocked. I, uh, there are certain things in it. I says this is devil's teaching or something like this, and I had really hard arguments with with the person who sort of uh, guided that group and so on. And I remember, wow, I was myself the real doubter and skeptic, and good I was because I really questioned my heart. So anybody who does reject my stuff right now, it's good. He's doing the right thing to themselves at the moment. Wow. He will learn in time because I also have rejected. A lot of truth in my path, which I later became to understand. Oh my God, this is true. This is amazing. And why did I now see it? I wasn't ready at the time. I had to do some other stuff before I was ready. So anybody who hates me, and the funny thing is, Michael, I rarely find negative reviews. Maybe once a month, I find one person right. who, who sort of leaves a negative comment there, and it's it's a sad. It's usually a very disturbed, sad thing. Always in capital letters, of course, which means right. the soul is crying out, definitely help me, help me, help me, because I am lost. Right. And I don't I don't accept yours, but I I need help. Um I know I don't feel bad about anybody who, who criticizes my, my work. Definitely. I feel I feel bad for the haters. I feel bad for people that aren't like expanding their cells, even if it means like to learn something as as simple as woodworking. Like, like why would you try and bring down someone who's trying to learn, you know? And 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 trying to expand their their consciousness. Like Why on, they're 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 hurting so much. Right, right, so right. Hurting so much. So it's 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 uh, they learn and the, they have got their guardian spirit and their guardian spirit will guide them when their time is right to the right sources of information to the right places. So I'm convinced that they are as guided as as we all are in their own time. And uh, I found myself. I've done the same thing. Look, there is hardly anything in life which in one form or the other I haven't done. When you live long enough, you just sort of do or the biggest crap, the biggest nonsense, the biggest sure. cheating or whatever. So um, being critical about other people's mistakes is not right what I should do because I must be honest, I've done a lot of stupid stuff in my life. Right. Do you regret and, it? Do you regret some of that? Do you, do you like, do you go, man, that, that karma is going to hit me one day? It, or No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I If, if I do really 
have a deep repentance in myself, I feel that this is also something which then will be uh, alleviated from my karma in a way, because I think repentance is important that I'd understand. And in my uh, video, I explain why repentance is so important. A lot of people say, so oh, forget about it, just move on. But repentance is something when you deeply feel repentant for something, you are actually feeling the pain you are giving the other person. You sort of identify with the other person. And you do this because, as I said earlier, you store it in your body and to your psyche. So next time you are tempted to do the same mistake, this memory of repentance comes back and stops you. So repentance is actually a pre helpful preventive for future mistakes. So that's another reason why I... Hang on, er Eric, one second. Bob Proctor said it causes dis-ease. That 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 those like you know the things that you hate about yourself it co it doesn't cause disease it causes dis ease right. and that in turn causes the cancer and the heart disease and 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 the the disease that we're all you know associated with modern medicine today is that what you're saying that 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 you know personal hate of yourself if you make a mistake and you're you're beating yourself up over that mistake is that going to cause the dis ease. That you're talking about this ease is my constant feeling bad about it that will cause a disease but once i uh, recognize it and i repent and i do it once right do it with christ that is a cleansing and then it's gone or in my view it's it's gone it's over so Got i it. repent every day and beat myself up that would be harmful no right. an honest true repentance of whatever i feel i've done uh, in the light of God, in Christ, and so on, will help, which I understand will help my karma if it ever is there still. But if there, uh, there is a reason why I suddenly remember something um, of the past which I did. So there are no coincidences. I said, live in the moment. And if that memory comes up, that is a memory to deal with right there and then. Repent right. and move on. Do not stay in this repentance, feel sorry for yourself and uh, beat yourself up on it. No, that will cause illness. What's the one message that you would give somebody if you had to choose either one video or one message where you say this is this is truly what i believe in and i think will help you the most whether they're a believer or a skeptic like what is your one truth that you would like to share well i think the, i put it all together in the video the amazing earth school and i think that is something which when that was amazing by the way when you said that we're all applicants here and we should be grateful for getting into this school that was mm -hmm. eye-opening that was amazing well, explain that hans that's that's the one I think which gives an overlook of the whole thing. Then you can go to 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 uh, to, uh, uh, to different uh, subjects, whatever you like before birth and after that, etc. And the morning, and the other uh, video which is not illustrated, it's only basically I speak about it. It's love it all, learn to love it all. With the message, the only reason we are here is to love, nothing else. Yeah, that's the only thing. That's, it is so simple again. I said earlier, God is uh, ingenious simplicity. It is all love. And if we want to be in the highest vibration again, this is all we have to do. And uh, therefore, the video on love it all is something which I find very, very important uh, to, to remind myself every day as well of. And it is a very simple, uh, simple idea in subject. It's not easy to follow through when you have anger, when you have got built up tension, when you have got bad relationships and so on. But they are there here because we have said yes to them prior our incarnation. We wanted this. It's like a school, like a college where you're continuously having been giving tasks and tasks. And once you have done your college, you're done with it and you hopefully have grown. And that's basically what our day to day life is. It's it's college or kindergarten, maybe it depends on what <laughs> I believe I believe I it was Christ who I believe it was Christ who said, Love everyone, mother in laws are optional. <laughs> well, I'm, it's I'm, not a Bible you are reading. <laughs> teasing. I'm teasing. I have a question, Hans. I'm teasing. <laughs> I have a question. You know, you know, we're we're business owners. Our day job is that we own a ground transportation company, so we employ a lot of different people. And you know, sometimes you have to make decisions that could hurt people because it's for the betterment of the business. You know, we just got through COVID nineteen, and as we're a travel related company, you can imagine what would have happened to a travel related company in COVID nineteen. All travel stopped, so we're in the process of rebuilding. But in the process of rebuilding, we had to dismantle a lot, and we had to lay off people. We had to, you know, slow down paying people because money just halted coming in. And you know that would cause pain. That would cause that would cause hurt. How do you deal with that as a business owner? Where you know I want to spread love, but I'm going to lay you off right now. I still love you though. Like, how does that work? You know, great question. 
Well, the alternative, if you don't lay them off, is you probably will bankrupt, and then you will not employ any salary, including yourself. So the alternative could be even worse if you don't do that. It is difficult to to do that to, to people, and I have no real simple answer to that. I just only know sometimes we just have to do what needs to be done. And uh, I, I, I can't answer that really in the, in the, in the easy right. way because it is something, the alternative is, uh, the alternative could hurt more. Sometimes you have to take a smaller, the lesser evil to, to avoid the bigger evil. Uh, so that is probably, we have to go through and whatever the pain we have to go through and in soul of others. It, the, the question is always the motivation. Whatever mm -hmm. we do, it's the why am I doing it? Do I hurt somebody because I enjoy it? Or do I hurt somebody because it's just no other alternative? Um, that is, I think, the motivation why we want to do that. That will be uh, the way how it's written our, in our karma and how we will face it. It's the motivation uh, behind everything. We can, uh, we can do it in, in, a, in a very painful way. Uh, uh, we can, yeah, that basically it's a motivation of what, why this is a reason. Is it for egoistic reason why I want to fire this person because I don't like its face anymore? Uh, or is it because I want to do for the greater good, which is maybe the other employees or whatever the position of the company, you do it for that. I think that's the key element. There is an element of survival in this life that you still have to go and you still have to, like what you said, it's either keep all 700 employees or you have to fire the majority of them because you have to keep what is what what's intact there is an element of survival you're you're vegetarian right i've seen some videos that you do not eat meat for the most part when i'm invited and so on and the occasional fish i do eat uh, yes i am not unfortunately vegan yet okay working on it yes okay I, is that because of you believe in not mur you believe in not killing or is that because it's a health wise choice or why <laughs> basically I'm not killing because at the end if you see my video all about animals they're basically our little brothers and sisters because they are evolving to become spiritual beings like you and me so basically we're killing our little brothers and sisters with the animals and when you understand how it works and when you see that in my video all about animals um, then it becomes very different they are not they are evolving beings and mm -hmm. the next step and so on then eventually they will become spiritual beings like we are as well so and since our body doesn't need it, and it's actually harmful to our body, that's the other reason. We basically only eat meat uh, for pleasure. And that is probably not a good idea to keep these animals in these horrific kind of conditions. They are bred and they are kept and they are slaughtered. Right. So, yes, I am our co-responsible when I eat uh, meat and, and uh, chicken or fish or even fish uh, in a way. Yes, I'm totally aware of it. Mm -hmm. I'm not walking on on water yet. Uh, <laughs> oh no, I was I wasn't asking if yeah, if you were no, because like we're we're carnivores through and through. So I'm working on it. Yes. Right. Well, we yeah. just, I was curious to know about that, yeah. Hans. Where can people find you? Please plug your show, plug your books, plug everything. Where can people find you? Uh, well, uh, on the website uh, Hans Wilhelm or lifeexplained.com. And uh, on, on YouTube, go to Hans Willem, <clears throat> and you will, it will come up. And I also, uh, uh, on hanswillem.com, uh, 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 on the uh, website, there you can see my books, etc., which I don't mention in my, on my Life Explained videos and in my career there. So anybody is welcome to, to join and, and see it, and whenever they are ready, and if they don't like it, that's fine with me too. Hans, we really appreciate you coming on, and you have an open forum here. We'd love to talk to you again in a, in a few months or a year or so, and because I think there's a lot more to cover. And um, everybody, please like, subscribe, visit uh, Hans Wilhelm, his channel on YouTube, visit lifeexplained.com. And if you like this show, please give us a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment down below if you have any questions, and uh, we appreciate you all tuning in. Everybody go listen to Hans. He knows exactly what he's talking about. Hans, thank you so much for coming on. That was so thank much you. fun. Thank you. Thank you, Hans. Hey, you, we're gonna, hold on one second. We're going to sign off now. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.